Hello. You may have seen some excitement online about sudden stratospheric warming and conflating that with the beast from the east. So before I get started with this 10-day trend, I want to emphasize that in the next 10 days, although a sudden stratospheric warming is likely, and I'll talk more about what that means in just a moment, there's no beast from the east expected in the next couple of weeks. And beyond 10 days, Things get very uncertain indeed. No one can say with any sort of guarantee what the weather will be like later in February and the start of March, despite what's going on in the stratosphere. In fact, I'm mainly going to be talking about mild weather, but before I talk about the mild weather, let's talk about the cold weather we're expecting on Thursday, a touch of frost ahead of a cold front that's moving south. As that cold front moves south, it will be frost free across central and southwestern parts. Some drizzly stuff first thing associated with that cold front. A lot of cloud but clear skies to the north and a touch of frost likewise for northern England and north Wales. Breezy for Scotland and Northern Ireland. Here we've got wintry showers. Northern Scotland could be spicy patches first thing with rain showers moving through at lower levels and some snow over the hills. So watch out for those icy patches. But by the afternoon actually the showers are easing, the wind's easing. And for many, certainly central belt southwards, it's largely dry by the afternoon. Best of the sunshine towards the southeast, a lot of cloud elsewhere. Temperatures across the UK not straying too far from average. Certainly a lot of cloud cover thickening as the day goes on towards the northwest as this warm front moves in. As the warm front moves in, actually, and things will turn very breezy indeed on Friday across northern parts of the UK, some gusty winds over the hills and just to the lee of the hills for Scotland and northern England could could cause some impacts for Friday's traffic, of course, heading into the half-term week. But there'll also be a lot of cloud associated with the warm front. And that cloud will be giving some outbreaks of rain, heavy at times for west and northwest Scotland. Otherwise, it's drizzly stuff affecting, say, the Pennines, the Welsh mountains, some western coasts. But again, there'll be brighter skies to the south after a touch of frost first thing. Sunny skies for southern parts of the UK, especially towards the southeast. Into the weekend, We've got a similar sort of thing. We're in this warm section between a warm front and a cold front. It's a slice of mild Atlantic air, a cloudy slice. So a lot of cloud cover, especially towards the northwest, where again, there'll be some patchy drizzle over western hills and coasts, but mostly dry for many. And it's increasingly mild. Temperatures by day this weekend, up to 12, 13 Celsius towards the southeast, 10 Celsius towards the northwest, above average temperatures by day. However, with high pressure close to the south, where we do get some clear skies, you wouldn't rule out a patchy frost occurring at night. So still some chilly mornings about in the south where we get those light winds and clear skies, but temperatures bouncing back again by day up to 11 Celsius on Sunday, nine Celsius there towards the northwest. And again, Sunday, some drizzly stuff over western hills of Scotland, northwest England, but otherwise a lot of cloud coming through. Some bright spells, the best of which will be towards the south and the southeast. The cloud will break up from time to time. And where that happens, it will feel quite pleasant with light winds and temperatures in the double figures. That high pressure is a beast. It's been with us for some time and it's very slow moving as we start next week. You can see it's slipping slightly to the east, but not particularly quickly. Around the high pressure, the jet stream's diverted. It's going well to the north of the UK, and as a result, we're in this warm side of the jet stream. Certainly when you look at the temperature at 5,000 feet above sea level, you can see a lot of warmth across Western Europe at the moment. But actually, that is a little bit misleading when it comes to overnight temperatures, because where we've got light winds and clear skies in the south, we'll still get a touch of frost by night. Where we get windier conditions towards the northwest, the air is a bit more mixed up so we'll certainly see the effect of that mild air at 5,000 feet translating to the surface. But there is a cold front approaching. Now that cold front's pushed along by a slice of more active jet stream coming in from the west. And the cold front is trying to come in from the west to affect the UK, but that high pressure's holding firm for Monday. And by this stage, things are starting to get more uncertain in terms of the progress of that front. And to show you why, let's take a different view of that front. Same time, midday Monday, but this is just one computer model run. Here it is with about 50 computer model runs. The European model run 50 times, and each of these lines is 
an idea of where that front will be. So a big range by Monday, but there's the UK. None of those computer model runs bring the front into effect the UK. We've still got high pressure in place. Then fast forwarding to Tuesday, again, a big range of ideas where that front will be. They all bring it slightly closer to the UK, but only a small handful push it in. One or two pushing it across the UK, one or two bring it into Western areas, but most keep it out to the West. So the most likely solution for next Tuesday is for the high pressure to remain uh, keeping things settled. By next Wednesday, that should say next Wednesday, by the way, by next Wednesday, that front is across northern parts of the UK. Still a big range, but most of them bring some unsettled weather, some rain erratically into the north, whilst the southern half of the UK, again, largely clear of the vast majority of those computer model runs, higher pressure over the continent. And that makes sense when you look at the most likely weather pattern for the middle of next week. This is next Wednesday. Most likely weather pattern is for the jet stream to start to push some outbreaks of rain and wind into the northwest of the UK. So for Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northwest England, whilst towards the south and southeast, still influenced by this high pressure, still keeping things largely settled. By Friday, there are a number of different likely weather patterns, but they all show similar themes. This is the most likely high pressure towards Italy, Weather systems going in around the top of the UK, still some rain for northwest Scotland. And this one and this one, these are the second and third most likely options. Uh, and they bring a bit more unsettled weather in from the west to affect northern and western parts of the UK. But again, higher pressure to the south. So I wouldn't be surprised if through next week, things towards the southeast of the UK stay mainly dry, even if we do see things turn more changeable towards the northwest. Either way, it's a general westerly airflow, and in the winter, when the air is coming from the west, it's often relatively mild, and those westerlies vary in strength from week to week in the winter, of course. What also varies in strength, as well as the surface winds, is the jet stream 10 kilometers above the surface, which can vary in strength. When it's stronger, we get more unsettled weather, but it can be also milder. When it's weaker, we get slower moving weather patterns. And something that can impact the strength of the jet stream is a circulation of winds even higher up, 25 kilometers above the jet stream in the stratosphere known as the stratospheric polar vortex. And this graph shows the strength of that wind circulation at 25 kilometers. Now, here's the scale, there's zero, and you're going up there up to 50 meters per second. And here's the average line. So at the moment, this is showing what, what the forecast is for this week. We're above average. It's a stronger flow than normal in the stratosphere surrounding the North Pole from west to east. But, and each of these is an individual computer model run, so they're all in agreement that over the next week or so, those winds are going to decrease and decrease quickly, going below zero into these negative figures. What that means is that instead of westerlies, they actually reverse. They become easterlies. And that happens when you get a sudden warming in the stratosphere above the North Pole, and that's as a result of some disturbance elsewhere in the atmosphere. It's something we call a sudden stratospheric warming. So when these sudden stratospheric warmings happen, then the winds can suddenly decelerate and switch direction. So instead of a strong westerly that we've got at the moment, we're expecting the winds surrounding the North Pole to become easterlies. And of course, that would mean they'd be flowing in the opposite direction to the jet stream well below in the troposphere where our weather takes place by the middle of February. But any connection between the winds in the stratosphere and the winds in the troposphere, the jet stream, the, there's a time lag and it's not guaranteed that connection. Sometimes, like in 2019, you can have a sudden stratospheric warming and no impact on the UK's weather. But because there is that connection sometimes between the winds in the stratosphere and the winds in the troposphere, it can increase the chances of a slower moving and more meandering jet stream when we get these sudden stratospheric warmings. And that then can increase the chance of colder weather in the UK. So it's an increased chance two weeks after this happens, but certainly no guarantees. And just to show you, the kind of uncertainties we're dealing with. Here's the temperature forecast from the European model for the end of February. The reds show where it's 
likely to be warmer than average. And this is showing warmer than average weather for the last week of February when that sudden stratospheric warming might start to have an impact on the UK's weather. So there's a potential reason for warmer than average weather following a sudden stratospheric warming. One is that the slower moving jet stream is leading to actually the placement of a high pressure that brings mild air across Europe, for example, like we've got at the start of next week, a meandering jet stream, but southwesterly winds. Another reason is that the computer models aren't picking up on some of the potential impacts from that reversal of the winds in the polar stratosphere. And just to show you another one, this is the first week of March. Again, mild air over Europe, close to average temperatures for the UK. So those are the kinds of uncertainties we're dealing with beyond 10 days. We're fairly confident that over the next 10, year, 10 days, temperatures will be around average and the weather will be largely settled towards the south and southeast, a bit more changeable later next week towards the north. But when this sudden stratospheric warming, which is likely to take place around the middle of February, uh, has an impact, is really towards the end of February, a long way off, three to four weeks. And the impacts at the moment are very uncertain, even if statistically it does increase the chances of colder weather. So there are no guarantees in the uh, beyond 10 day period, but we'll keep you updated as and when we get more information. Bye bye.